107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. Michael K. Williams with me tonight. But in addition to Michael K. Williams, we have Dr. Glenn Toby. Uh, and and brother, brother Dr. Glenn, can you just share with us uh, the whole purpose of the... Uh, of the Book Bank Foundation and, and its sole purpose in helping the community? Yeah, the Book Bank Foundation is a literacy foundation. Um, I think literacy is the first step, one of the major steps into incarceration, mental illness, drug abuse, violence, and a lack of access to the, the empowerment of the ecoverse. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, whether it's, like we could change the world one page at a time, one word at a time. And I was homeless from eight years old in the seventh grade, mm-hmm. um, bouncing around in Brooklyn. I was born in Brooklyn raised in Queens, and I look back at my life, and most of my accomplishments were from being in the jungle. You know, School of Hard Knocks, mm-hmm. I graduated from the School of Hard Knocks first. Um, ran with the decorated, right. underappreciated. Right. Um, and my destiny um, was based on hard work, perseverance, and finding nuances and pockets. Like Mike with talent, right. you know, some people have talent, some people have verbal skills, some people have spiritual skills, some people have intellectual skills. And I think there's different forms of education. Our people are kinetic people. Sure. And we are the kind of people that have to see it, feel it, and touch it. So now the event that's taking place tomorrow, um, you brought each of these individuals together for a sole purpose. Let's start with Dr. Abdullah Shabazz. Absolutely. He, uh, Shabazz has been a uh, icon in the uh, community of music. He used to roll with the Wu-Tang, Big Daddy Kane, all these guys. He was a uh, student of the school of our wonderful friends uptown back mm-hmm. in the day with mm-hmm. the clothes, Dapper Dan. Mm-hmm. And he's always been a humble, righteous man. I've known him, you know, we ran parallel. Never got a chance to do a lot of work, but he's always recognized my work, I recognize his work. It came 360 degrees. Now he is um, creating custom-made clothes for me and my high-profile clients. And <laughs> okay. he also has a heart for the community, and I'm in the gutter, so I brought him in there with me. That's what's up. And Miss Jackie McGee? Jackie McGee, I'd like, you, I'd like Jackie to tell you how I found her. You know what I mean? Jackie's an icon. Yes, she is. I, I teased her and told her the other day that she was every guy's girlfriend. Because when she, when she was singing that record, uh, you're right, you're we right. all thought she was talking uh, to us. We're, we're going to play that no, record next. There was no right. expenses. No expenses. Didn't have to take her out to dinner, lunch. Didn't have to worry about the verbal skills, and she'd be gone, Lenny Green, after you do your drop and go to the commercial. Wow. That's that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. But So so tell me, uh, what made you come to this uh, Book Bank Foundation? I um I actually posted um, something on in- Instagram um, the other day. Well, actually, seven days ago. I'm homeless, and I said it's time for me to speak out. God put it on my spirit. He said, post it and talk about it. And Glenn got in touch with me through uh, my friend Harvey, um, and Glenn was like, call me. I'm calling you. Call me. And... Um, it was like, it's all God. That's all I can say It's all God. Because, you know, sometimes we feel ashamed and it's like we can't talk about it because I've done, you know, I'm the voice on Make It Last Forever. I'm the voice on Salt and Pepper's um, Expressions. I'm the voice on, you know, the the Family Stand Connected album. I'm, you know, I had my own Jackie McGee record. It's, it's like you never think that you would be homeless. They say that we're one chick. Away, we're all one check away to possibly becoming homeless, which is a strong statement in itself, you know, because a lot of people don't understand the walk until they walk in a person's shoe. So I, I commend you, uh, uh, Dr. Toby, for coming up with this concept. I think it's it's really in, ingenious. Um, but share with us how your connection came with uh, Brother Michael Williams. I'm one of my dearest friends. Um, one of my dearest friends, Aaron Pinkett. Uh, he's worked with me for about ten years in sports management as. Okay. Uh, talent manager, marketing in every phase. He's one of my dearest brothers, and that happens to be Mike's big brother. And we thought of somebody that came from a background from the same struggle. Because, you know, we're talking about childhood. You, right. know, you talk about adult homelessness. You talk about disparity as adults, but it starts really young for a lot of children. They're exposed to it. So he and I, I think, are examples of children that were able to identify and get through that. There you go. So, Mike, tomorrow... You receive, uh, you're the recipient of uh, a Hero Award, man. Um, and, I, and I know you're very proud and you're humble in, upon receiving it. You know, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's surreal. You know, I, I, um, I still, I'm still pinching myself, you know, as to like who would see me as a hero, you know. Um, 
I, you know, anybody that knows me, man, I've, I've struggled in, in, in my life also, you know, as everybody else, you know, um, my thing was, um, uh, was drug addiction, you know, um, and I had to, you know, I had to learn how to, I had to learn from, from scratch, how to love myself, get to know myself and, um, and to fight my demons. And it's an everyday struggle for me, you know, so, uh, which is, you know, one of the reasons why I, um, I accepted the, uh, invitation to uh to be ambassador for the um ACLU um to end mass and inc mass incarceration mm -hmm. you know um that's a topic that's very near and dear to my heart you know when i see um you know people who are who are ill whether it be mental illness or or ill with the with the um with the affliction of 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 addiction those those are health issues not criminal issues especially if they if you know someone is just uh taking a little money to go to go cop something to ease their pain and not, not hurting anybody but themselves mm -hmm. you know i'm not you know we some of the money or all that money we're taking to to build prisons we need more rehabilitation centers we need more shelters like clean shelters um for 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 people to get off these streets and to, and to where they can catch themselves. Everybody that's homeless ain't crazy. He's not on drugs. Sure. You know, it's you know, it's a you know unfortunate situations that that lead up to that. You know, which is you know uh, when I was out there in Baltimore, I was running wild on the wire, man. And, you know, I was out of my mind. Right. And thank God for my cousin Aaron and, and 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 you know and his father. We we all affectionately called Pop. They took me in and, and kept me grounded as best they could so that I wouldn't, you know, kill myself out True. there in the streets of Baltimore. But um, you know, it's it's really time to to end mass incarceration and to and to and to figure out other ways to deal with um mental illness. You know, I, I watched a friend of mine who I, I grew up with, I love dearly, who he's younger than me, he's from the Bronx and he is a huge reason why I am I, I consider myself a, a thespian today. And he had a bright future, talented, smart, you know, ch charismatic and um his the death of his mother, um, it broke him and he, he got diagnosed with a bipolar disorder and instead of him being uh instead of that being addressed, instead of him you know, getting mental attention, he was thrown in the prison system, and I watched a uh, a uh, uh, all this potential go in, and what what they what the prison system spit out, it broke my heart. You know, I, I lost a friend, and and to that, you know, that's why I speak out against mass incarceration and other means of dealing with low level drug offenders and people with addiction and people with mental illness. Well, you know, what, brother, I knew your. I knew your life was it was stacked with with great layers, and and this is a layer, and, and a, of course a platform that we don't know about you, you know, really being so passionate about. But I'm glad that you are exposing this information, because uh, a person in the position that you're in right now, people listen extra close. So I commend you for doing that. This honor, it ain't about me. It's about community. It's about family. It's about it's about culture. You know, it, you know, I. I I, I accept this on behalf of the community, on behalf of the hood. You know, everybody's a hero. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't single myself out for anything I did in particular. It's, it's, you know, it's all about love, love for the community. Well, brother, we thank you for being there, Dr. Glenn Toby. Thank you so much, brother Shabazz. Thank you, and Miss Jackie McGee. Thank you all.